We're here in Belgrade, <coughs> here in Serbia, your home country. Take us back to how it was growing up here and what do you remember of the tough times this country went through with the bombings, the wars, and how did you deal with that? How did your family deal with that? Well, I remember a lot of things and a lot of things that I don't want to remember, but I still do. You know, I don't wish to anybody uh, to to go through some things that we, that we went through. You know, for example, for example, you know, seeing the plane above your head just releasing the rocket, you know, and then feeling the the strike, you know, and waking up every single night for two and a half months and and feeling the the war. So these are things that that you know you don't want to remember, but somehow when you remember them. Uh, they make you stronger and you appreciate things uh, in your life you value things in your life much more after that you know that health happiness friendship family is the most important things in your life and and then and then you you really know that um, that those things if they happen uh, it can it can turn your life and your way of looking at the life uh, you know 360 degrees so uh, but I actually, uh, um, we as a kids, uh, it was in 99 when we were bombed as a country. Um, I was 12 years old back then. I actually celebrated my birthday, ironically. <laughs> I celebrated my birthday in the bombings. And uh, actually, to, to look at the, at the brighter side, we played tennis every, every day for four or five hours. We were spending the whole day at the tennis club playing tournaments, playing with each other, you know, joking around with kids. And, and I, I've made many friends throughout the war. Actually, that, that's what I was trying to explain to you. You know, the, the, the people get united so much and have the same spirit and carry each other out. And it's, uh, it's just different because at those times you, you can't do anything, you know. It's a, it's a higher force that uh, you cannot affect on it. You just try to save yourself and, and, and find some things that, uh, that you can do. Uh, and, and survive that. But I I in those conditions, in, in those times, uh, actually you have now players like Ana Ivanovic, Elena Jankovic, myself, Tipsarovic, Zimonic, you know, all these, all these guys went through that. And, uh, and I think uh, it was a question being raised, uh, you know, being asked um, to all of us for the last two, three years. How come you're coming from such a small country with so many problems and you still manage to, to become top players you know singles doubles regardless you know and and, and uh, there is not not any really rational explanation for that because there was no system in our country that there was supporting tennis because tennis as an individual sport was not really a lot of uh, didn't have a lot of support financial support from a country because uh, you know sport was very appreciated and still is very appreciated and supported from the country in our in our uh, in Serbia but these are mostly team sports like water polo football you know uh, handball volleyball basketball basketball exactly those sports we are very successful in but tennis was kind of never never had a, ten a tradition and history and that's why we had to fight our way through with our families and it really accidentally happened that we all made that breakthrough in the, at the same time. But uh, I think that one of the reasons is, is uh, mental toughness, is that hunger for the success that guided us to, to where we are. How and when did you decide that you could be a professional player and you could be good at doing that? I kind of, as a kid, always knew that uh, I want to be the best in the world. It's but funny. a lot of kids it, want that. So. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But, uh, you know, I was always coming to the practices ready uh, with two shirts, um, water, clean bag, three rackets, and, you know, all the other kids were with one racket. Because I was, I was uh, taught that way from um, Jelena Gencic, that is my first... Uh, serious coach that I spent a lot of time with and she taught me as well as my brothers uh, the basics of the tennis behavior on, on and off the court. She was like my second mother in a way, you know. Uh, she she's recognized the talent in me and uh, when I was seven, eight years old she already told my father he's going to be the best in the world one day, you know, and you have to carry him out and support him. And it was, it was tough for my father because nobody ever in my family played tennis. And my father used to be a professional skier and he lived out of uh, skiing, you know, being instructor. That's how he met my mom, by the way. 
and uh, and of course out of the restaurant and there was no tennis you know and when I was four building up to three tennis courts just in front of the restaurant I was helping them out bringing beers to the guys and just uh, doing the construction work and and they in, in return they they got me a chance to to play my father bought me racket and uh, that's how my my tennis story began and social networking are you into it do you use it yeah i use uh, uh facebook and and you know just going on internet and using emails and stuff but not too much you know just using for connection with the people that uh, that are worldwide my friends that i know if i add you as a friend will you accept me depends on depends on things uh, depends on who which friends you have <laughs> more female friends are are accepted